Continuing with the rail fence series, I want to talk to you now about the wonky rail fence. Now, the cool thing about the wonky rail fence, well, okay, one of the cool things about it is that it's called wonky, and I just think that's a funny word. The thing you need to know about wonky is wonky means there's really no rules. You get to do whatever you want to do. So I want to take you through the process of doing, I'm going to have two kinds of wonky rail fence, which is very similar to maybe a crazy quilt, except a crazy quilt goes around and around. A rail fence is going to continually go in a general-ish, all the same direction. So this is the one that my friend Gina started. It's not done yet. It will be done someday, but it's not done yet, but it will be. And while she was away on a quilt retreat, she continued to make a lot more of the block. So she's getting closer and closer as we go. I want to take you through the process that she did for making these wonky blocks. First thing she did is she used muslin. So she used an inexpensive muslin, nothing too fancy, nothing too expensive. I want to move these out of the way so we can get right to working. And she cut them into a nine-ish inch size. The ish is part of the fun of wonky. Okay, so we've got this ish size, and then along with that, we have strips. So we have strips of varying colors and thicknesses. That's what you need to start your wonky rail fence. Now, I'm going to start with maybe a piece that is ish biggest of all of the pieces. Oops, I'm just going to use one layer. Do, 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 do. Move these out of the way. I'm going to start with one piece and I'm going to lay it here. Okay, here. No, here. No, right here is where I'm going to lay my first piece. Then I'm going to take my second piece and I'm going to lay it here. No, I don't have to. I could lay it here if I wanted to. I could lay it at any angle I want. So just for kicks and giggles, I'm going to lay it right here. You know what? I'm going to move this to the other side so that when I get to the machine, it'll be on the right side. All right. I really like that part of the print. So I'm going to make sure we see some of that. I'm going to lay it right here. Now I'm going to go to my sewing machine. At the sewing machine, I don't even need my, that quarter inch seam guide that I normally need. Don't need that because it really doesn't matter. Oops. Let's lift the presser foot and the needle and just start sewing. And I'm gonna sew with my normal scant quarter inch seam allowance just because I can. With a wonky or a crazy quilt type black, you don't have to. You could use any size seam allowance you want. So if in your world the seam allowance has always been something that's just not been working out for you, maybe this is the block made just for you. Gonna cut that off. And then I need to trim off some of this here i'm going to move this out of the way there you move that over there i want to trim this extra purple part off so i'm going to come up here there's my leader which i really didn't need and i'm going just because i'm just being ish let's pretend that we don't have any fancy tools here i'm just going to cut off some of that extra could I use my add a quarter ruler, fold it back and cut it back like a normal paper piecing? Sure I could, but does it really matter when you're making a crazy quilt-ish wonky type block? No, it doesn't really matter. All right, so now I've got that one done. Now I'm gonna grab another piece and I'm gonna lay this one like that. So it'll be a different angle than the original. Go to my sewing machine. And so, and again, I want to trim off some of this. Do I have to trim it off? Well, I don't know. I guess it's not absolutely necessary, but you could, you should, but you don't have to. And press this out. So in the process, you can see how now I've created this wonky shape of this little purple guy. Well, I would continue on with that same step, just randomly adding strips as I go, kind of different sizes. It can be turning. Here, let's put some down here as a sample. Ooh. Ah. All right. So you get the idea. So that is how these were created. All right. Next, I'm going to show you how to trim these down. 
So now that we have our wonky blocks pieced, and we we'll kind of look on the backhand side here, everything is pieced, now we need to trim them down to size. As always, before I would trim anything, I'd use a little bit of the Mary Ellen's Best Press, get everything nice and flat and crisp, and then I'm gonna trim it down. So trimming it down using my OmniGrid ruler, here, let me move this out of the way, I have lined up with the glow tape, the OmniGrid glow tape that goes on the back of the ruler. I've put that at the eight and a half inch size because that's the size I want to trim them to. Lay them down. Now and this is where you can continue the wonkiness. You don't have to try to be square on anything. There's no straight lines. You can't be square on anything. So let's make him just even a little bit wonkier. Trim on the right hand side, the left hand side. Spin that around. Now tuck him right into the eight and a half. Right there. And like that, I have a beautiful wonky rail fence. So the idea now is you take this wonky rail fence, which is going horizontally, this wonky rail fence, which is going vertically, and this is how they connect. And then you can imagine how everything will continue. Now Gina did make this one in an on point setting. So if we look at how it is so far, it's got a really cool on pointness. This is going to be a fabulous quilt when it's finished and I can't wait to show it to you someday. We should probably give Tina some sort of timetable, but we'll deal with that later. So that was the wonky rail fence using the muslin background and just you putting the strips wherever you want. For some of you, that's just a little bit too wild. You can't go that wild. So I'm going to show you one more technique for creating a wonky rail fence. So with this kind of a rail fence, it's a little bit wonkier, but it is planned. I actually did these paper pieced and when I finished it because I used, all right, I got to brag about my African fabric collection. I am obsessed with African fabric and I've literally been collecting it for well over 20 years now. Little pieces, big pieces, I've had the opportunity to actually go to Africa and buy some there. So this is kind of like my portable African fabric collection. So these are not the yardage pieces I have and these are the ones that I used for this little quilt. So. It's just going to be random, of course, lots of colors because all the African fabrics are, and most of them were in these smaller pieces like this, all right? So I've got my pieces of fabric. Let me move this guy out of the way. And this is going to be done with traditional paper piecing. So this is a piece of paper that I printed off onto that um, lightweight paper off of EQ. I did print this on EQ and this is available for purchase. This will come with the um, rail fence pattern. If you choose to buy the rail fence pattern, which will be available on the OnPoint-TV website, this pattern will come with it. So if you're not so sure that this wonky thing is your cup of tea, but you still thought it'd be fun to try something different, consider it this way. So with this, I'm gonna take my pieces of fabric, I'm gonna measure whatever my largest piece is. So if I'm looking here, my largest piece, you know, that's two inches. I'm thinking I'm gonna cut these into three inch pieces, two and a half inch pieces, so that I'm sure I have big enough pieces for all of them. I'm gonna put it here, oops, I've got a rotary cutter somewhere. And I'm just going to cut them into two and a half ish inch wide pieces. And we're going to proceed to do this in the paper piecing technique. So here is my paper. On my paper, I have A1. That's where I'm going to start. So always the fabric goes on the back side. So I need a fabric piece to cover the A1 section. Looking through it, yep, it's got plenty of space. Then, okay. Please ignore the writing on the back of this. I used recycled papers, okay? Now I'm gonna put my second piece down, right sides down, right on top of that. Now many people like to put pins in. If you wanna put pins in, that would be totally up to you. In truth, I do not normally put pins in, but I've made it so that the head of the pin is gonna be far enough away from the seam that I won't have to worry about it. Now I'm gonna flip it over and at my sewing machine, I'm gonna sew on the number one seam line. 
So at my sewing machine, I want to put my needle in the center position. And I want my stitch length to be down to a 2.0. And I'm going to start sewing. Sewing on the straight line. And cut my thread. You could do chain piecing here. If you had a couple of them ready, you actually could chain piece them, do 10 or 12 of them at a time. That would be very fun. So here's my seam, and I'm going to use my add a quarter ruler. Now for this one, I'm going to use my 12 inch add a quarter ruler because my blocks are, I think, 9 inches, something like that. So to traditional paper piecing technique, I'm going to fold back on the line that I just sewed fold it back, use my add a quarter ruler, and trim to a quarter of an inch. Now I'm going to press this this way. All right, so I don't have, I know what, I'm going to put something under here. I don't want to put my iron directly on top because I did not bring my little clover iron that I normally would use. There. All right, so now he's all pressed. So with traditional paper piecing, the next step is to trim the paper. So here is my next sew line. I'm going to fold it back on the next sew line. Boy, I hope that extra markings is not distracting. Sorry about that. All right, trim this to a quarter of an inch. That's a pretty big piece. I might hold on to that. There might be something I could do with that later on. Now I'm going to lay my next piece down. Let's get a blue one there. Lay that down on that line. There's a straight line. Now I'm going to flip it over and I'm going to sew on that sew line. Uh-oh, I'm out of bobbin. Let's keep going. Just a couple more to go. Yep, just like at home, the bobbin ends up going empty at the most inopportune times. So again, now I'm going to press this. Fold on my next sew line. So we're just going to do one more of these because I think that you have the idea. If you did not or have not watched the paper piecing episode on the On Point Dash TV, that's the one that you want to go to. I show you a lot of different techniques for doing paper piecing using this technique with triangles and a lot of different shapes too. So please find the paper piecing episodes on On Point Dash TV. All right. So one more. Trim that with my 12 inch at a quarter ruler. and put another piece down. So then I would continue in that method. Sewing on the line, pressing it, folding it back, trimming, place, sew, press, trim, place, sew, press, print, press, trim. So that's the idea. So with this, all of them are wonky but now not not super duper duper wonky, just a little bit wonky like you can see that these angles are pretty, oops, if I turn it, uh, some of them were flipped the other way. But the idea is that they're pretty the much the same. They don't have to be. You can change them as you go. You could draw a new line and create a different line altogether. But this is just a little bit more controlled for you that want your rail fence a little wonky, but you're not willing to go really off the edge and just, you know, sew on any line that there is. These can be assembled into the traditional rail fence layout. Whoops, this way, if you wanted to. Stuff would get really, really nice. But like I showed you in mine, I used uh, some sashings 
and the cornerstones in here. Didn't know I was going to do that till the blocks were done and the quilt just asked for it. So those are a couple of different techniques you can use for using up some scraps in your stash and doing something wonky in a rail fence. When we come back next time, I'm going to show you how to do a mitered rail fence, which is a really fun technique. I think you'll like it. Talk to you soon.